everybody. Welcome to Drum Machine Vibes. My name is Even Though. I go by the name of Byron G. And uh, we're producers for Hellhound Publishing. Oh, I used the wrong hand. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Byron G., why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, like you said, I am a producer and, as of late, the engineer for Hellhound Publishing. Uh, yeah, man, I just love making beats. I love music in general. Um, always around it. I love doing shows with you guys. I love... You know, I love the Nashua scene. I love everything that we're building right now, and I just want oh, yeah. to continue to do what we're doing. Right. Build it up. How long have you been making beats for? I've been making beats since, I want to say, 2009-ish. Back, uh, got my first version of the cracked version of Fruity Loops. Ah, yes. <laughs> that we all know about. Uh -huh. And uh, immediately just started ripping everything i possibly could off of youtube and any other vinyl and all that other stuff it's mm -hmm. so funny though because like when you first like get started you're yeah. like oh i got a laptop let me just get a turntable and it's like no you need an interface and right yeah you know, all these other things and you find out the hard way after mm -hmm. spending lots of money on stuff that you probably don't need Right. Um, you find out the hard way that you need sp specific things to even start doing what you what you have in your brain or whatever. Yeah. Is exactly. Going on. Um, I've jumped through Fruity Loops. I have uh -huh. spent a whole lot of time with Logic, which I still use. Um, yeah. I use the machine software currently. I use Serato Studio currently. Oh, that's Serato, man. <laughs> it's it's crazy, right? It is crazy. And, I'm about to jump into the world of Pro Tools soon. All right. Because I switched from Mac to PC. Man, so you do it all, huh? I it's fun. It's fun to uh, <laughs> you know, switch it up and keep your keep the noggin, you know, flowing with yeah. different ideas and figuring out different software and stuff. I think it's fun. Yeah, man. But uh what about you, man? When did you start producing? Dude, like like you did, I, I started on Fruity Loops, yes. and I, I can't imagine how many other people started with with either the cracked version or the right. real version. I mean, I just called it the demo. I had the demo version. I didn't even have, like, a cracked version. Yeah. It, so the year was, like, 2006, maybe? Okay. 2004? One That's of the, probably when I first saw Fruity Loops for the yeah. first time. Yeah, so I, I, one of my friends in middle school had it, and I was like, I've never seen drum sequencing before. Like, this is right. crazy. Just, uh, Yeah, I started making beats for myself because I was rapping, but I don't really rap anymore. Um, but there's, a, you know, Cool Edit Pro. That was oh, what I was yeah. recording myself on. So uh, as as you said, you're an engineer, and, and I started engineering around the same time that I started making beats because... It was more a necessity. I mean, what did, what made you start engineering? Um, probably the same reason for you. Yeah. I literally, um, obviously started producing first. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get anybody to rap on my shit, so I started rapping on it myself. Ah, nice. And it sounded like you know, horrible, <laughs> just straight from the microphone and the awful environment that you right. you know you don't care then you just want to. Yeah. Set up the microphone wherever you can and start rapping. Mm. I, I went to the West Coast and mm. I kind of used engineering as my escape because when I was out there, I like took a couple classes and, and yeah. found a studio and had a mentor and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's wild because like our stories are kind of similar because I instead of going out west, I went south. I went to, right. uh, to Florida, to Central Florida, yeah. which most people wouldn't consider the South, you know. But still, yeah, yeah, yeah. D directionally on a compass, it was South. It's so, south. <laughs> yeah. So I was there for t like 12, 13 years. And that's where I like, like, got my chops pretty much. You I know? didn't really, I didn't realize you were down there for that long. Yeah, I left in 2008. Damn, okay. And you yeah. came back in... 2020, just, so that's 12 years. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I was I was down by so many, like, different influences. Like, of course, your 
you've got people who are doing the trap stuff so there's that so i went through that phase and it sort of like has lingering essences in my current stuff but yeah. um you know my shit's east coast to to death you know what i mean oh, so yeah, like yeah, when i sure. when i hear people like Harry Fraud or somebody mixing like trap drums with like samples and stuff. I'm like, yo. Mm. Um, but like that's that's one of like the more recent people that like has influenced me. But like, who are who are some of the the old, old like older people? Like, uh, not older people, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Um, the the usual suspects, man. Pete Rock being number one. Okay. Uh, and hearing, I've probably overtold the story a million times, but hearing uh, the beat for Fake and Jacks with Pete Rock and I and I, hmm. uh, that was literally the beat that I was like, I want to do this, or at least try. Yeah. Um. So yeah, definitely Pete Rock, definitely premiere early. Mm. Uh, Ninth Wonder it was massive. Those oh. are probably my big three. Yes, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And then the second tier would probably be like Dilla and like obviously like Alchemist and Nice right. and Nice. Yes, you know what I mean. So, what about you, man? Um, well, I I don't break it down as much into tiers, but I like the way you categorize it. So, um, I I do it more like by what I was saying earlier, like the different eras. Um, but, yeah. But Premier and Alchemist and and you know Kanye, he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. like his diversity of of beat making, along with Ant from Atmosphere. Um, yeah, I got the pleasure to meet him um, after oh, a show sure. one time. That. Yeah, it was after a show one time. Uh, he was on the street uh, afterwards, and he made sure to. Uh, take a photo with us you know i mean i made sure to oh, get yeah. a photo with him like he he, <laughs> he he stopped and and like took the time is what i'm saying like yeah uh it was pretty cool that i got to meet like one of my influences like that was that was crazy like but just people like that who who incorporate samples in in different ways and use a lot of boom bap style drums pretty much right um you know who i i was listening to uh this certain someone or people yesterday mm. and yeah. i was talking to cody and you know who you remind me of a lot like producer wise oh let's it's hear Dan it. danger mouse i love that bro okay so quick story about danger mouse <laughs> not him personally but like him as an artist that i have listened to uh when Adult Swim first like became a big thing in my life. Uh, yeah. I got introduced to Doom, not personally again, right, but right. through yeah. <laughs> through yeah. Danger Mouse and hit and Doom's um, like the Mouse in the Mask album. Right, so right. the fact that they were incorporating Adult Swim uh, characters and uh, skits and stuff like that, and like making themed songs based on. Mm. Uh, shows that I like and, and all that yeah. I was super hyped to to get it and uh, I had this was like fresh off the heels of the gray album, too. So okay. uh, Danger Mouse had remixed uh, Jay-Z's black album, which is my favorite Jay-Z album not not black his album. best but my favorite. Yeah, uh, it's pretty damn close I'm right it's, there And it's in the top said. three I'd say in it in like popular opinion actually no blueprint and anyways we won't get into that right now but uh um but like i bought the mouse in the mask album and i was playing it in the car for the first time i got it from barnes and noble right there on the DW, <laughs> dw corner and uh so i played it in the car for like some of my friends in high school and uh the very first thing you hear is brack from adult swim yeah and, yeah. and he and he goes space ghost the first words are why did you buy this album? You're stupid. <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh shit! And then like the drums come in, and the, no, the horns come in, and then you hear uh, Lois Griffin go f yourself or whatever. Yeah, and then you're oh, like, like, all right, this is the dopest shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that's cool. Like Static Selecta is probably the person that I'd say your Ooh. your style most reminds me of because it, uh, yeah. or at least like a sliver of Static's, you know. Uh, uh, not a sliver. This is a pretty big slice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 
of <laughs> of his catalog, you know, because he 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 does like kind of more like up up tempo stuff, mm. but your your shit is like right in this this range that that I noticed on Meet Me in Gate City, like I because when I was like doing the video edits, because I don't know if I mentioned earlier that I do the the digital marketing and the the video editing. Yes, for, you do. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> for for Hellhound, I used the right hand this time. Hey. Um, so what I noticed is that most of the beats are around the same tempo so that they line up with what's happening in other songs on the same album in the video. So I can mute the video and, and the, sh the shit will line up perfectly. Everyone's like nodding their head and shit. It's 79 like... 79 to 84 was like that There it is. In yes. a nutshell. There it Tempo is. Tempo wise. And for those who don't know, where where can we hear Meet Me in Gate City? Hellhoundpublishing.com. Everywhere. Okay, Spotify. Sp Apple Music. Yeah. Band they can camp. they can only buy it in one place though. Hellhound. Hellhound Publishing. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> yes. Dot com. <laughs> I really I think Static Static is a huge influence. In is that right? Sure. That's great huge. to hear. So I I'm glad I I nailed that one. And especially like his drum patterns. Yeah. Especially. Mm -hmm. I have uh, grown very fond of over the years right right <laughs> yeah he his uh I, he does something that i i now try to emulate which is he'll drop a certain part of the beat out that you thought was part of a sample mm, not you yes. but the collective you <laughs> right yes so so i think that's part of like having the stems and all that to the sample which i'm sure you know is like some service or software or site or whatever. Yeah. Serato Studio, baby. Serato. This this episode is not sponsored <laughs> by Serato Studio. And it's funny because the video I did yesterday was literally like the opposite. All I talked about was Native Instruments. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, what the uh, video that you recorded? You said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, word. Yeah. Um. So for those who are going to be tuning in for other episodes. This is the type of stuff that we're going to be talking about here is uh, what will range from the broad musical topics to the, the nitty gritty of the technical uh, aspects to music and production and maybe even engineering. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, I mean, I know we plan on doing this, for a while, so I'm sure yeah. we're gonna reach a whole freaking spectrum of topics and fall off topic and talk about other random stuff. And yeah, it'll be good, man. It'll be good for we'll sure. Keep it music, though. It's always, always music. And that is our life right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in a good way. Well, also music adjacent because I feel like there are there's a lot of things that music touches. And, and we will explore those things and more on Drum Machine Vibes. Drum Machine Vibes. Brought to you by Hellhound. I can't get the fingers. <laughs> what, um, what are you currently using the most as far as software? Currently, um, it's probably a tie. I've been super into Serato Studio for the uh, past probably month and a half. Right. But the best thing is, is I can bring all of my VSTs and plugins in. Mm -hmm. um, there's one plugin that I can't get to work with it on PC though. It's the Decap Drums That Knock, which is like one ah. of my favorite plugins. I can't get it to freaking work mm. in Serato Studio on PC. That's weird. But uh, I'll figure it out hopefully. Mm. But uh, definitely Serato, and then um, I am I just love Native Instruments. They, everything that they drop is like super clean all of their vsts and their play series are phenomenal everything like their um software that comes to, to upgrade everything right. is super easy it's all together i can't i will never leave native instruments <laughs> ever you're loyal to the brand if you will. i'm invested way yeah. too much yeah. <laughs> way too much money is invested you said play series what is that word 
Play series is like um, so they have an extensive like library of different VSTs. Mm -hmm. um, so like they, it's um, they have like um, like forty from OVO has like uh, oh like his own right. like, drum software, and mm -hmm. then he has his own like piano keys, and then there's also yeah. like uh, basically it's just software that you could use one sound. Mm -hmm. and another sound merge them together and it has like delay and reverb and all the stuff in the interface wow. already mm -hmm. so you could kind of like tweak everything right there and all the sounds are like super clean and they're just one of a kind man nice so who would you say what are, what are you using the most you would I, say right now i use logic for 99.9% <laughs> It's the good, the one thing that I don't use Logic for is uh, pitch related things. Okay. Because I don't have any uh, out of I only have out of the box plugins, you know. Right. So and time stretching. So I use the time stretching uh, occasionally for like short gaps, but not okay. for or unless I want or unless I'm embracing the grittiness that comes with all the artifacts you'd get from stretching it, you know? Down, yeah, down sampling, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I use Audacity. There you go. It's uh, like it's it's nice because there's also, you know, you can preview it before you before you render it or whatever, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, and Audacity's free, you know? For sure. So, with Logic, it's like once you time stretch, you're, like, stuck with it. Yeah, and... There's there's something that happens in Logic where, um, say you have a file this big, you just trim okay. it down to that, and yeah. then you time stretch it a little bit. You can't, everything that you trimmed out is gone. You can't untrim. It's just, yeah, right. It, because it, it comes a new file and that file replaces that shit. It's weird. Yes, it does. And I used to I used to love their um, their sampler. Yeah. I used to use that a lot just to like map the like key like they, map your samples yeah. to the keys. They had it on the the EX S twenty four whatever, yeah. and it's and gone. Now it's different. It's I mean, oh no, it's not gone. It's just different. Yeah, it, it's way more complicated. Yeah, right. There's like a light version and then like the full version. The full version, I'm like, all right, this is like way too much for me. Yeah. Uh, the light version is pretty good, but it's not as good. I feel like as the old yeah. EX24. Right, and that that was like a game changer when I figured out how to do oh uh, use a sampler in Logic because um, in Ultra Beat there was only one little key on the on the keyboard that you could go more than one key. It was like from there to the end of the octaves, yeah. so right. it was like. Every other key up until that one was just one sample per each. So right. if you wanted to do an 808 or a snare or a hi-hat or something that shifts in pitch, like in Fruity Loops, which is every, mm. you can change the pitch of every single note, uh, sound, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is what I was used to when I was using Fruity Loops, and then I switched over to Logic, and I'm like, oh, no. What am I gonna do? And then somebody like showed me like the sampler is like, I'll just put my drums in here, like make the hi hats like this long and the snares yeah, this long. Yeah, yeah. Man. And now I don't know I don't use that shit anymore. It's I I know, dude. I recently tried to do it just like, hey, I ever made a beat in logic. Let me let me hook up my friggin' MPK mini and, and try to make something happen. Right, I just yeah. got way too frustrated. I don't know. Ultra uh, Beat's nice though. Yeah, I don't I don't have a problem with uh Logic's sampling as much as I do just like the the interface of the new sampler, but like Ultra Beat has yeah. been like my jam for over a decade now. Yeah, Ultra you know Beat's I mean? very very close to uh Battery, which is Native Instruments pretty much version of it. Okay. Battery, that's what it's called. It's called yeah, Battery Four right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Word, yeah. yeah. And there's like still stuff about Logic that I'm learning. Not to say that I ever took the time to master the entire program, but obviously they keep adding stuff. Right, I yeah. dude, I was like going to do that right a year ago. I have like a all these books on Logic, 
to because I wanted to be like I wanted to get like certified in it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then I bought a machine, and I'm like, all right, after, <laughs> I'm sticking here. <laughs> oh man. Well, I yeah, I I have that on my checklist, dude, to get Logic certified because that's that's something that like I see the that little box for on applications to certain positions yeah. that you know like a certifications or licenses or whatever. I'm like, damn, it'll come in handy for sure. Yeah, so I might you know might have to borrow some of those books. <laughs> dude, I got you, man. I got them right over there. So mm. let me know. Can you hold the page up to the camera so I can start now? <laughs> yes, it's a uh, Logic X for dummies. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I <literally> I have it. <laughs> is that really what it's called? I have one of yeah. That's one of them. Wow. I have, yeah. I thought you were I was just like, ah. This this must have everything in it. Yeah. I thought you were just riffing. Nope, I got it. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> you know, I have all this random crap that may or may not be used. Right. <laughs> now or. <laughs> Ever. Well, some of it is is coming in handy, very like, uh, very much so, like the the camera here right now. Yeah, yeah, it feels good to actually start using. Like I've had this freaking green screen behind me for like two years now. Nah, -uh. we used it for holding up the sign, the Hellhound sign, and at, mm -hmm. at uh events. And I just recently found out that these these stands are in rough. Rough shape from those events. Oh man! But, but it still works, and I'm using yeah. it now behind me. So wait, you mean you're using a green screen right now? No, I am in front of a stack of records. What? <laughs> Crazy, uh, right? Yeah, this is. <laughs> Might need to take and, a commercial. And break now I'm so. outside, <laughs> but you can't see that. No, I, I see it all. Wow, the. The trees and the cactuses. Uh, could do what we're doing from anywhere. Yeah. My my background is, is real. Yes, it is. And it's nice and warm in there, finally. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in temperature and in lighting. That's right, man. So, um... Why don't we do a, a wrap-up and uh, let people know what what we got coming up next yeah man so we have on this monday which is gun the what is that the ninth the ninth yeah. the whole entire hellhound crew is doing a takeover up at sugar bush in vermont courtesy Not to be confused with sugar loaf sugar loaf which i originally thought which I was like, oh my God, we have four hours of drive. <laughs> but thank you to Mr. Burns, the almighty. This guy is, i he's amazing, man. He's Yeah, he's really cool. Um, but we're going to be rocking up at Sugar Bush. Bush. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. At the, um, the ski resort up there. Um, oh. Takeover. It's not a lick of snow. Not I mean, who knows? There, there might be some there. Tomorrow we're getting some snow. Don't, the, don't. Probably getting, I know, I know. I'm right there with you. Especially you coming from Florida. <laughs> <sighs> you probably hate snow now. <sighs> but yeah, we'll be up there. We'll be up in Vermont this uh, this Monday. So what can? So as far as drum machine vibes, I think people can expect an episode. What are we doing this weekly now? Yeah, I believe so. We should yeah. pull it, do it weekly, uh, every Tuesday. You can expect a new episode to come out on the Hellhound Publishing YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I will include a uh, link in the bio or in the comments type deal so everybody knows where to find us. Yeah. Um, eventually, hopefully, um, we'll get on maybe a streaming platform like like Spotify or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, Patreon, right? Um, Patreon, Hellhound Publishing at Patreon. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah about it. Why don't we uh, plug our albums? Yes. So I'm trying to think of the video that you dropped for the new year's 
Oh yeah. Um, well, we got Rain Check, your your great uh, beat album. Yeah. So we got Rain Check. I dropped that back in April. That's available everywhere, but most importantly at HellhoundPublishing.com. Then we streaming have streaming into purchase. Yes. Streaming into purchase, and then we mm-hmm. have Solstitial. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hey. And that is my uh, debut uh, album under the name Even Though. And it is a lo-fi type album. It says yeah. right on the cover. And where can we find that bad boy? All the places you can find Rain Check, which are <laughs> hellhoundpublishing.com for purchase and streaming, as well as Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you stream your jams. Anywhere from. and everywhere. Yes. And I, both, I think both of our tapes are good, like... Uh, study relax type music so, oh yeah so yep, yep. if that's or a type, if you just want to get some bars off you got you get some that's bars off as absolutely well absolutely an option yes yeah so you guys it's been great anybody who's seeing this video get yeah. used to it because there's going to be many more to come hope yeah. you're digging it um again visit hellhoundpublishing.com to look at all of our all of our albums we just have we just dropped carnivora from tripsy which is his debut instrumental album as well Mm -hmm. um all three of those are totally different vibes in a good way oh yeah Um, a a kid named solo did you mention that a kid named solo Mm -hmm. um which is as well on our website which and it will be hitting streaming platforms very soon and then me wait a minute city who produced a kid named solo you didn't even mention it a a guy named byron g produced a kid named solo he's so Um, humble or forgetful i forget i don't know yeah (laughs) um so yeah you could check that out which was like i said it'll be on streaming platforms soon as well Mm -hmm. then uh cody pope and byron g's meet me in gate city as well um hellhoundpublishing.com streaming everywhere you could possibly look for music awesome man well it's been great chatting with you and I'll see you again this time next week on Drum Machine Vibes been a pleasure I'm even though I'm Byron G (laughs) (laughs) we'll work on our timing (laughs) yeah 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 alright man let's let's uh let's let's cut it 